Hello my dear friends and welcome to my channel. Don't forget to make yourself a cup of tea with snacks if you want, because today we have very interesting stories, and one of them is a story about a woman who tried to kill her son, cause she thought he simulates illness. Please subscribe if you haven't and I hope you'll enjoy it. My family friend, I'll call her my teacher, is an ex-cosmetologist and ex petition teacher, and now owns several highly rated salons and spas, hair coloring, cutting, styling, manicures, pedicures, and makeup. She knew I wanted to also do those things, but I am currently going to college to become a music teacher. She decided since she has a salon near my college, she would teach me her old lessons and what was required to be taught on weekends after the shop closed, my days off, and afternoon in exchange for working reception and as her assistant, booking appointments, greeting, checking people in, grabbing things, and doing errands if needed. She also said when I got my license, she would hire me there so I can work during the last years of my college, five-year degree. My dad gave me a loan to buy the things I would need to be able to do it once he found out over $1,000 and I could take out more if needed for only this and make payments whenever no interest charged. My teacher gave me her old makeup kit, no makeup, just something for transporting it easily in, that only was dirty and didn't have locks on it, and my dad painted it white and painted cherry blossoms with my name in big neon pink letters on it for an Easter gift to me. I leave my kit in my room, in the corner, behind my dresses for my musical performances for college, since quarantine. Now, my stepmom is just getting interested in makeup. I give her tips and a list of what products would be good for her skin, mature, dry, sensitive skin. I even told her I'd give her a discount if she wanted me to do her makeup, the price of products used only. Her response was why can't you do it for free, we're family. My EM alarms were going off. I told her I need to pay back the loans I have and left when she started getting mad. I already didn't like nor respect her at this time. If I leave for a night, I lock my bedroom door and bring the only key to my bedroom in the house with me. I went to a family bar back for Memorial Day weekend, two aunts, two uncles, my grandfather, my teacher, her BF, my mom, myself, and my two cousins, one six, one four, and stayed two nights. When I came back, my bedroom door was unlocked, which was a red flag, since it's a force of habit to lock it. I looked and saw my kid in the middle of the room, open. That was a red flag factory. I just broke down and cried. My dad saw me and saw what was in my room, he knew that it was all wrong. My stepmom comes down, wearing the makeup from the kit, and wondered what was wrong. My dad asked her what she had done, and my stepmom told her well I made a copy of her key and borrowed your stuff. Makeup is cheap, you can replace it. I almost punched her. My dad took her into the garage and tore her a new idiot. She cried, said he was overreacting, and drove off to her son's and daughter's and brother's house. I calculated how much it would cost for me to sanitize, clean, and replace the things that couldn't be sanitized, eyeliners, mascaras, broken brushes, broken powder products, whole palettes that had been completely destroyed, etc., and shipping for all of it. It came out to over $750. One of my palettes was $44 alone, no shipping, and was a personal favorite brand of mine, shout out to Glamlight. My dad sold one of her sewing machines, returned the bill did yourself dollhouse that he had bought her, and sold things of hers until he got over $900, all in cash. He used some of that money to replace my locks, only one key was made, and transferred the rest of the money to my account, which I used to get what I needed to replace everything, using my code that all beticians have to get a small discount with certain brands. I ended up have about $100 left over and used it to buy my dad's Father's Day gifts, and the rest gave the leftover money as loan payment. When my stepmom came back, she freaked out and at my dad and I for destroying her hopes and dreams. All I said was you break it, you buy it. She screamed at both of us said she deserved all the things she paid for. I was petty enough to have left her all the broken and unusable makeup and brushes where her sewing machine used to be with the cost of each product plus shipping was taped to it. She refuses to look, talk, or even be in the same room as me now and my dad said that if she had one more chance before he kicked her out for good. So, happy ending, but the M, my stepmom, is still as entitled as before. I always lock my room now and keep my personal makeup in my room. Quick add on. My dad always told me something. Don't piss off and or mess with people who handle your food or money and money and time are two things you should never waste. 
So when my stepmom had done that and messed with technically my money, he was pissed that she was wasting my money. So he made sure in the end, she only wasted her money and not mine. You have an awesome dad. I was so hoping he would take your side, and good for him for holding her accountable. I'm so tired of entitled adults. Past. EM entitled mom. Dad my father. NM neighbor mom. Me or new stepdad. Edit. CBEM's cool boyfriend. I just got out of the hospital for extensive knee surgery, and walking out the door of the hospital reminded me of this story. Important things to note. I have a severe allergy to cashews. It's bad enough that 1 to 100 of 1 will kill me if I'm not treated properly and quickly. Nowadays, I always make sure to have an EpiPen on at all times, but when this story took place, I was a little more forgetful about it, I was 9 leave me alone, and didn't always have it. I have asthma, which can be a pretty lousy combination with anaphylaxis. At the time of this story, my dad was working for a company that treated him like garbage and wouldn't give him time off for anything except medical emergencies pretty much. This story starts about 4 days before my 10th birthday. Story, a week before my birthday, my dad's boss told him he was going to San Francisco for work stuff. We lived in Denver at the time which meant my dad was going to miss my birthday. It was upsetting, but I understood, and he said we'd have a party once he got back. While he was gone, my brother and I were staying with EM, at the time, we knew she was a little entitled, but my dad trusted her to take care of us. On day 3 of my dad's trip, my brother and I were playing in their living room when EM offered us some granola bars as a snack. At the time, I was young and wasn't very cautious, so I didn't always read ingredients for things I was eating. Unfortunately, there were cashews in the granola bar so when I took the first bite, I started to feel it pretty quickly after. Within minutes, I was throwing up everywhere, in severe pain, and my throat was closing up. And as if it couldn't get worse, that was when I realized I had forgotten my EpiPen. Then, the panic and closing airways triggered an asthma attack, and I also didn't have my inhaler. So, at that point, CB calls an ambulance, and I pass out on the floor. The paramedics were able to keep me from dying of the combination of anaphylactic shock and asthma attack, but I did end up slipping into a coma for 11 days. This meant I was in a coma on my birthday, but I guess that was probably pretty low on the list of concerns, considering they weren't 100% sure I was going to make it out of the coma. So, a week after my birthday, I finally wake up. At first, I was fairly calm about waking up in the hospital until I found out that I had been in a coma for 11 days. At which point I started panicking and almost gave myself another asthma attack. Anyway, they kept me there for a few days just to make sure I was okay and it was safe for me to go home. So, we finally get home, and as soon as I walk in I see my brother, my grandparents, my aunt, my uncle, my two cousins, EM, and NM and her kids, who my brother and I are good friends with, as well as a big sign that reads, Happy Birthday and Welcome Back the Land of the Living. They had planned a surprise birthday party for me once they found out I was out of the coma. So, we went about doing birthday party things and hanging out, I got some questions from my brother and cousins about the coma, while New Mexico bakes my cake. However, the only important thing that was happening at this time was the following conversation between EM and NM. Man, that must have been terrifying for him to go into that coma, I mean imagine having to be that careful about everything you eat. Oh, don't tell me you buy all of that. What? He was clearly faking it to get attention. Everyone knows that asthma and allergies aren't real. Both of those are very real and very serious problems. Whatever. You sheeple are just too stupid to see through the government's lies. Then EM just wandered off. I feel it's important to note that at this time, the birthday cake had just been put in the oven and this conversation happened in the living room, which did not have a line of sight into the kitchen. After a while, the cake finally finished baking and we all congregated in the dining room to eat it. So, everyone sang happy birthday to me and my aunt cut the cake and gave everyone a slice. I was about to take the first bite, when the luckiest thing that could have happened, happened. I dropped my fork on the floor. At this point, I, wanting to act all grown up and solve my own problems, decided I'd go into the kitchen and clean the fork myself. Right as I finish and start walking back out to the dining room, when I hear my dad yell, what the hell did you just say? I run out to see what's going on and see my dad standing up staring daggers at EM while she cowered in fear of him. I it was for his own good. 
It turned out that after the conversation between EM and NM, EM had snuck into the kitchen and poured most of the bag of mixed nuts that she had brought with her into the cake. How the hell is that for his own good? Well if he had eaten the cake without knowing they were there he wouldn't have been able to fake a reaction, because he wouldn't have known that there was anything in the cake to react to. What the actual hell is wrong with you? I was trying to prove to you sheeple that Allard. I knew inviting you here was a mistake. I figured it was good for the boys to have you in their lives, but you've made it abundantly clear that it is not. So what are you saying? I'm saying, get the hell out of my house and stay the hell away from my kids. You can't do that. They're my kids too. That's right everyone. EM was my actual mom. Not after what you just pulled they're not. And if you want to take this to court, I'll make sure that you aren't even allowed in the same state as them. Now get the hell out of my house before I call the cops. You just wait until my father hears about this. Her dad is very wealthy, so I think she was expecting him to help her get custody of my brother and me. We found out later that not only did her boyfriend break up with her and kick her out of his house, but when her dad found out about what she did, he refused to let her live with him, stopped giving her money, and said that if she took my dad to court, he would support my dad. As you can expect, she never took us to court. And as for the rest of the party, we just bought a new cake because nobody wanted to take the time to bake another one. We also decided to just throw out the pan we had used for the first one, because she had put so many nuts in it that we were worried about it contaminating anything we put in it after that. What the hell. After being in a coma for 11 days she didn't think that allergies were real. She was like, ah yes, every 10 year old loves faking a coma on their birthday, that makes sense. So about two months ago, last time all the stuff went down was about a month and a half, I ran out of inhalers. I have seriously bad asthma and if I run, go near a pet, walk outside when it's windy, pollen storms in Ohio are bad, sleep the wrong way, or get out of the hot shower asthma will act up. So not having an inhaler wasn't an option. I asked my mom, who I will be referring to as EM from now on, if she would pick up my inhaler from a pharmacy. She said, no I said why and she goes on a rant about how I use my inhaler too much. I told her as nicely as I could that I will freaking die if I don't have my inhaler. And she said she would get it. Two freaking weeks pass, and she still hasn't given me my refills. And I know I have them, so I decide to walk up to Kroger Pharmacy and get them myself. So I walked about a mile to get to it, and they told me that I needed my insurance information and I said, why? They said they didn't have my insurance on files, which was weird, because I've been using them since I was forced to give in with her back in September of last year. I went home and asked EM about this, here's how it went. Me, me, M, M. So they said I needed my insurance information. Who? The pharmacy. You can give it to them, but I cancelled your insurance. You did what? I cancelled your insurance. Why on earth would you do that? I don't know my security money didn't come in. My insurance is cancelled because your social security money didn't come in. Yep. So is Caleb's and Carl's, my two brothers, insurance is cancelled too. No they still have it. So you just cancelled my insurance. Yep. And we have no more inhaler in the house. Nope. Okay. I left and went to my friend's house because I have a spare inhaler in her house. I went home the next day and crap went down, this part kinda kicks into another one of my stories, but I'll retell this part for new people. My dad just got out of rehab and needed a phone, I started flashing one of my iPhone 6s so he could use it and while doing that my brother kept knocking on the door to try to steal my water bottle. He opens the door anyways and I tell him to get out while sitting in my office chair, I scoot the chair over not realizing that my wired headphones were attached knocking over my $1,000 computer and breaking the glass. The computer still worked so I picked it up and screamed at my brother to get the hell out. EM came in and said that she was gonna get the water bottle full of grape juice I picked up the bottle and said. Take the damn juice and threw it at the floor near her, her BF, who we will refer to as ESJ for entitled step jerk. I started coming upstairs. EM picked up the bottle, opened it, and poured it all over my computer, monitors, keyboards, mouse, and bed. I started to push her out of the room, and she was acting like I was about to hit her. I looked at ESJ when he was coming up the stairs and he said who the hell are you looking at, I'll beat your freaking butt, and I said, so something and closed my door, and pulled out a knife in case this guy tried to hit me, you can see through the hole in the door. 
They both went downstairs and I ran out the door and told my dad. He was really about to beat the crap out of him, but we decided I'd be best to go to my grandma's until he got out of his group meeting. I went back for my shoes and my mom wouldn't let me get them so I did what any rational person would do at this moment. I went to ESJ's mountain bike and sliced his tires, busting the inner tube. And ran to my dad and left. Later that night I came home and went to bed. I woke up at 3 a.m. to an asthma attack. I called 911 because from what I thought I have no inhaler and there were none in the house from what EM said. So the ambulance got there and gave me a breathing treatment and got me better, I pushed to go to the hospital anyway, so they would give me a free inhaler. They had to wake up my mom, and she threw a fit, saying she had an inhaler and I should have asked her. She was hiding an inhaler from me, I was so pissed. We were in the hospital, and about an hour later after we're about to go she had the freaking police called. The police arrested me and had me in cuffs until the next morning. She had them take my dad off the list of people who could get me out, so he forced her to come with him and got me out, I didn't go back to her and stayed at my aunt's. On the bright side, I got my inhaler. Well, glad you're fine if there's a way to get her completely out of your life do it she almost got you killed, cancelled your insurance and hid your inhaler from you. Well guys, that's it for today. If you end up enjoying this video please consider subscribing, and if you missed the last episode on the channel I'm gonna link it right here, the story is about a woman who called the police on OP because he refused to teach her son. Check this out if you haven't, and I'll see you in my next video.